All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we are. Sorry for the delay on the start, but we're here all together. So this is what we're going to be tying up tonight. It is a Patriot streamer. Tied this once before in the past, but this is how we're going to tie it tonight. We'll give us a few minutes, uh, give everybody a couple minutes to jump in and join us. Be sure to say hi and hello in the chat. Uh, be sure to find that. Hit that uh, thumbs up button. Hit that like button. Hit that share button. Might as well hit the share button now. Take a minute. Hit that share button now. Let everybody know what we've got going on tonight. What do we got? We got Steve Hartman's tuned in. We'll say hi uh. So, we got Josh is in the house. What's going on? All right, let's get the screen pulled up. I got all these different screens that I have to, and everything's delayed and whatnot. So, How's everybody doing? We got Frank in the house. What's going on, Frank? Thanks for tuning in. It's always good to see you. That's right, Jess. Hit that share button. It looks like a squiggly arrow. Let's go ahead. say hi and hello to everybody just we're going to give it a few minutes because i normally try to get things started um a little bit earlier than later but here we are once again started about two minutes late but that's all good iowa is on and doing good all right so tonight we're going to be tying a, a variation of the uh, patriot and uh, if you look at the fly in the Patriot or the Patriot, the Project Healing Waters vice, you'll see the Patriot Dry Fly. And here we are, we are going to be tying a streamer version. So let's go ahead and just get to it now. Let's switch our camera over to there we have it. All right, so. Uh, we're going to go through it as we go through it. It's pretty simple. Uh, hackle, bucktail, thread, peacock curl, a little bit of a blue flash. Um, so yeah, we'll cover all the bases as we get through it. So let's go ahead and just set our sample off to the side. And... get our lights turned on how about that now we can see all right so kind of similar to uh, last week's fly uh, the devil is in the details on this one um, it's all about thread wraps and uh, thread control so we'll go ahead and get our hook in our vise this is a size four I went with a size four on this this is a Got a, got a cough. Hold on. Thank goodness for mute buttons, right? All right. So here we are. It's a Moonlit ML054. What we're looking at here is it's a 2X long. You could go with a 2 or a 3X long shanked hook, um, a standard length shank hook. Uh, just might be a little bit short for what we're looking at here. And moving on. I am going with a, well, the label's jacked up. I'll we'll have to take my word for it. That's a uh, 210 denier red flat wax thread. A pretty standard. And we're going to go ahead and start this right about there. A couple eyes lengths behind the eye. And what we're going to do is we're going to start off by laying a flat thread base. And... When I say flat, we're going to do our best to uh, spin our bobbins. We'll go ahead and just go down here. We're going to spin our bobbins 
counterclockwise, anti-clockwise, right? Spin your bobbins. And what that's going to do is that's going to untwist your thread, especially if it's a flat wax or if it's a flat thread. So we'll work that all the way to the rear where we're going to tie in our tail. Excellent. And for our tail, I have a uh, some hen hackle. This is a uh, brown, probably a, I think it's a, might be a coachman brown, somewhere pretty close. It's a nice, good chocolatey brown. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to find myself a good size feather that I know towards the base is going to have some of the longer uh, hackle barbs, which is what we're after here. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to find our transition point from our main barbs down to our downy barbs. And you just give it a tight pinch, pull it straight down with uh, with some gumption. I mean, it's you got you don't have to give it your bona fide war cry or anything like that, but you don't have to grab onto it. All right, coax the coax the barbs out. And what we're going to do is we're going to bring one side together and give it a little pinch. Top down. Peel it off like a little banana peel. Got to pinch tight. This side is going to be uneven because hopefully the tips will be close more or less. We're going to go about, go about a hook's length, or not a hook's length, but a, a hook's gap. A little bit longer. Maybe a half a hook's length. And we're gonna set that on the top, on the back end. All right, so this is where the devil's in the details, folks. We wanna make sure we keep our thread wraps very methodical. I went one, two, nice and easy. And I'm gonna carefully wrap, working my way forward flat, keeping my thread nice and flat. Stop there for a second, flatten that out a little bit. And I'm just slowly working my thread forward a little bit at a time. If it was glue, it would be a little dab of glue, yeah. So we're just gonna keep this going a little bit at a time. And what we got going on is our, our unevenness of our uh, fibers, end of our barbs, uh, it helps give us a little bit of a taper. A little taper. We don't want a lot of taper. If we would have just cut that at the back end, we would have had a shelf or a ledge. All right. Look at that. We kept everything right there, kind of right there at our point of no return. Let's go ahead and trim that off. If you have anything left over. All right. What we're going to tie in next is got some blue flash. This is a blue H2O flash or any, uh, any type of flash will work. Um, but since we're doing our Patriot version, or Patriot variation, um, we're gonna go with the blue. Uh, fun fact is on the actual Patriot dry fly, in that recipe, instead of using a blue, the recipe calls for a pearl. And through some sort of voodoo witch magic uh, it just comes out looking fantastic somehow these bits here are at uneven lengths so let's go ahead and even those out real quick so let's go ahead and check in how many people do we got tuned in we got eight or nine people depending on if you count me or not which I really don't I don't think I count I might might not <coughs> So we're going for one, two, three strands of this blue flashaboo. You can get a blue flashaboo or anything like that, that'll work. And remember folks, this is a uh, this is how we're tying it right here tonight. Um, it's not the end all be all way. So we're gonna take our three strands, we're gonna tie those in towards the front. And go ahead and cinch that down a little bit. And now we're going to take touching wraps all the way to the rear. And this is, again, we don't want to hurry. Just take your time, flat, 
I'm tight. Just like my abs. No, just kidding. Got a big old donut. So how we doing? What do we got? We got my the old man is in. Hi, Paul. Leody do, as we say. All right, almost to the back. See how many times I, I just stopped every so often. Oh my goodness! I thought okay, they I do got three in there. All right, so we're tied our thread all the way to the rear. And I'm going to stop maybe a half of, maybe one thread, thread lengths in the back end. And I'm going to carefully wrap my thread forward now. And we're going to break this up into almost three even segments. The two, the two blue segments will be just a tick um, bigger, a little bit, just a tick longer than the uh, red segment in the middle. But I guess you could really... If you want a target to shoot for, look for uh, three even segments here. And speaking of three, we're going to go ahead and just take our blue flesh boo. We're going to start wrapping this forward. All right, you got it again. You know, just like I said before, this is one of those delicate, delicate patterns that you don't want to just rush through it. So, and when I'm working with this uh, flash boo, um, you know, slack is evil. So we want to maintain constant tension on this, and I've actually found that using uh, hackle pliers really doesn't work. There we go. Keep these bunched up as close as we can. It's okay if one decides to run off a little bit on its own because the guys in the back will uh, be sure to cover it. So take your time, little bits of tension. Work our way forward up to our thread. And, you know, if you miss a micrometer and a little bit of your red thread is sticking out, um, the fish will never bite it. Uh, just kidding. No, if you, if you skip a little spot, that's not going to be the end. Trust me. The only buddy that's going to notice is you. But, we're tying this to fish. Alright, so... Take a couple of wraps over it, and I'm just going to carefully pull it forward now to get, get these off to the side. All right, again, careful, nice and easy. We're at thoughtful, methodical thread wraps. We're trying to keep this nice and even. We're going to bump this center bit forward. Every so often, if you have to, just... Dress those off to the right. <laughs> you know what? We're going to go maybe one more wrap. I like that. Okay, we're all the way up front. We're going to pause there. We're going to take our thread back. To this end point. I'm just doing a once one way and a once all the other way there. Just because this... Uh, it's a thread. It's super, super thin, and in lieu of using a, uh, a flat, uh, a silk floss with multiple strands, we're doing this with one strand, and it just happens to be 210 denier and uh, slightly lax. All right, so there's our uh, little center bit. We'll fold our flash back. And continue our thread wraps forward, nice and even. And now we'll continue with our blue. Baba blue. Again, nice and even. Take your time. This is one of those no sense to rush patterns. And it's not a case of, oh, we'll get more coverage if we have five bits of uh, flashaboo. Three to four. That's, I wouldn't go much more than four, and I wouldn't go much less than three. So there we have it. Whew. That's a, that's a fun one. All right, let's go ahead and trim this off. 
And if you have a long enough segment, go ahead and feel free to reuse that. All right. So before I go too far, I'm going to take a little pause for the cause, and we're going to add a little dab of uh, solar res on top. Uh, you could use a, uh, a head cement, uh, Sally Hansen's uh, secret sauce. Um, but right now we don't have time for that. We want to get through it. You'd want to uh, put a very thin layer on top of all that because we don't have any wire uh, working as a counter wrap. If you don't want to use uh, any adhesive, uh, you'll definitely want to add uh, a wire as a counter wrap because just the exposed uh, flash that thread, it's not very critter proof, if you know what I mean. So let's go ahead and add a little drop. And we'll just spread that around. Super thin layer. We're not gooping, we're not gabbing. We're just getting enough in there to hold it all together for the rest of time. And just work your bodkin back and forth. If you are getting to the point where you got a big goop underneath, a big glob, well, that's a case of you use too much. That's too much. All right, let's go ahead and give this a zap with our uh, ultraviolet light. Please do not stare at these light bulbs. Please do not put them inside your body. That's not good for you. And depending on the resin, you'll want to give it a couple of seconds. Uh, this bone dry is cured in about 10 seconds. And it's true. It's true. I've timed it. You're good to go. 10 seconds. That's half half the time you should uh, it should take at a minimum to wash your hands. All right, any questions thus far? Go ahead and um, ask away in the chat. We are climbing pretty fast with our subscription numbers here on All Tied Up Fly Time School. It's super exciting. Uh, we just might hit that 1,000 subscriber mark by the end of this pandemic. All right. Peacock curl. I want to find myself one, two, tray strands. And I'm not grabbing my best and my greatest here. Uh, what I'm looking for is just some basic peacock curl. And these are short little nubs. There's the, the butt section. You know, they're almost half lengths. They're the bottom of the bag. And, you know, the reality is I want a little bit of extra puff coming out of this. Um, and you got to use the bottom of the bag somewhere. I'm not independently wealthy, so we got to use the whole bag, right? You don't just eat the top bits, the top portion of the bag of cereal. You got to eat the whole bag of cereal. All right, a couple of wraps forward. And at this point, I'm still leaving myself about an eye's length behind the eye. Aye, aye. Where's my Navy guys at? Who we got? We got nine people tuned in. Any Navy? What's up, Navy? Ding, ding. All right. Anchors away, as they say. All right. So I got my little hook and hackle grabber. Hackle pliers will work, but this works just a little bit better. We'll grab our three strands. I'm going to give it a little bit of a twist. And I'm turning this clockwise. See how that just wrapped around the thread? It wants to go. And there's a delicate balance. You can over twist. You want to give it just enough so it wants to kind of self hug around the shank of that hook. Just the right twist. And keep these nice and tight to each other. We do want to we do want to build up just a little bit of bulk. Because we're going to use that as a prop, as a kickstand for our wing. Looking 
nice little rope on that. And maybe one last wrap. Give that a little release. And bada boom, bada bing. We we have peacock curl, ladies and gentlemen, and it is nice. Had a nice chat with Mr. Uh, Mr. Dave today from our Project Healing Waters program. It was always good to talk to Dave. You know you're always, you know you're destined to talk to people when you when you're done with the phone call and you look down and it's like a 45 minute phone call and it's like, what? Where did the time go? Had a lot to talk about, a lot of, a lot of catching up. All right, so we want to add ourselves a little bit of a beard. And what do you know? We're gonna use the same hackle. take just about that same same little pinch same little pinch nice and tight nice and swift a very methodical and thoughtful tug get that ripped right off all right let's line up our beard right about at the end of that rib okay we're gonna go ahead and take a couple of soft wraps just to capture it and take the butt section Swing it down and around. And that's it. I like that. Just like I say at the VA, a couple of thread wraps on top and a couple in front to lock it in place, right in front. Give it a little spin so we can get right there and trim that off nice and clean. Bada boom, bada bing. All right, we got our tail, we got our body, we got our peacock, we got our beard. Nice. Could probably go a little bit denser on that beard, um, but for now, that's going to work. All right, last but not least, a little bit of white bucktail. A little white bucktail for our wing is going to be fantastic. Grab a little segment. And it's not quite the full, I'm not going super, super dense on this. I'm keeping me on this. For me, you know the word, sparse is nice, right? So I'll we'll take some of the bucktail, hold it by the tips and we're gonna just pinch and pull. Right there, pinch, pull. Do a little pinch and twist. like that should do us for now let's go tips down into the hair stacker tips down into the hair stacker watch this get this helicopter him right in it's like a zen jedi moment it's like the less you think about it the easier it is so let's go ahead and give those a few taps i have no idea how loud that is for you folks but hopefully it's not too loud Check out our wing. And get rid of any few last little bit of stragglers. Boy, this is actually perfect. I like it nice and sparse. So we'll measure that out right at about the same length as our tail. little trim and we're gonna lock this in on top make sure it stays on top all right once I got it somewhat locked down I'm gonna lift this up and I'm gonna do one wrap while my threads at the back end I'm gonna take one thread wrap and go underneath and that's gonna help kind of rooster that up just a little all right, let's go ahead and finish our head. Nice and even. 
and a quick whip finish. This is a case of you don't want to spend too much time wrapping on your head because in our case we're using a, a 210 uh, denier thread. If you're using a smaller thread it's going to take more wraps but you have a little bit more control over each wrap. You're uh, compromising being able to cover some real estate for the super fine precision but with enough control uh, you can mitigate that uh, loss of precision accuracy there's a difference between precision and accuracy right you can only be as precise as your accuracy or as accurate as precise something like that i don't know you guys tell me all right just a little insurance policy up front i really like this bone dry up front Again, you could use some secret sauce, some Sally Hansons, that's just fine too, but we're cooking along here. We got Brian in the house. What's up, Brian? Thanks for tuning in. It's always good to see uh, familiar names. I wish I could say a familiar face, but we're not all on the face. We've got a few more seconds to zap a zap. There you have it. So that is uh, kind of, that's it. That's our, our first fly of the evening. That is my variation of the patriotic or the Patriot streamer. So we'll just kind of let that mellow there. And we'll just take a second and say hi to everybody. Grab a sip of coffee. And we'll just check in. How's everybody doing? We got, let's see here, eight people tuned in. How's the, how's the Elite Eight doing? How's Frank? We got Steve, Frank, Josh, Brian. Uh, if I'm ever in the VA, let's put names to faces. Okay. If I'm ever in Virginia. Ah. Uh, I'm like, I go to the VA, I used to go all the time, but like everybody else, we haven't been there uh, recently, so. Hey, Dave, good to see you. Really enjoyed our phone call today. It really made my day. I haven't, you know, it's sometimes you just need to talk to certain people uh, a little bit longer than you talk to other people, because, I don't know, sometimes you get away with the 10-minute conversation, sometimes it's uh, pretty near an hour, so hey. We're doing good. It's a great day to be alive. It was a wonderful sunny day here in St. Cloud. Um, we got our first fly done. What do you say? Should we tie another one? I think so. We're going to do this till 8 o'clock. I don't know. I think about 30, 30 minutes per fly. That's, that's a pretty good, pretty good pace. You know, and, and something like this, you really want to take your time, make it look good. Um, questions, comments, critiques, what do you got? All right. Well, we're going to slide back over to the back. I got my my computer laptop screen and all that is um, off to the side from my uh, what do you call that the bench so we're gonna go ahead and just pop back over there and tie another one let's do it I'm open for suggestions as to what to tie next week. Um, there was a suggestion for uh, Dave's Mr. Brown, and I was supposed to email uh, that recipe. I was supposed to get that recipe from Dave and email that to somebody, which I completely forgot about until just now. But what do you do, right? I am me, and... 
unfortunately I'm stuck with my own brain. All right. Um, let's see here. Where did I put those hooks? There we go. Oh yeah, there is a uh, Patriot dry fly. That's the original. Actually, what we're gonna do? Let's see if we can't just pan down right there. That is a Patriot dry fly down there. And I might have one tucked away somewhere else. I've tied a few and given some really nice ones away. Um, uh, the dry fly is set up very similar to, uh, uh, what is it, a royal, royal coachman. Kind of that same concept. But yeah, that's the... That is the Patriot Dry Fly on the Project Healing Waters. And their pins and coins, I guess. Let's get this back in there. And on the actual logo, it's just uh, the trout. But there we go. Let's get this back into action. Sorry about that rocky road there. We are back in business. All right, let's go ahead and get this started. Size for it, I'm going with this uh, 2x long. And you can tie this upper and smaller. Yeah, similar to a, a Royal Wolf as well. Yep, excellent. And we're using a uh, 210 denier. And we're going to start a couple eyes length, couple eyes behind the eye. Eye, eye. We're keeping our thread nice and even. Even Steven, tight and even, tight and flat and even. Take your time. We're gonna lay a nice even thread base at the bottom. And right to the uh, bend of the hook. All right, what do you think we tie this very similar as before? We're going to set that. We need to find our hackle. What do you guys think? Uh, even though we're not palmering it, does it still deserve the bell? I think it does. Although it's really more or less kind of with the woolly bugger. We're looking for some longer barbules there. And you know what? Even though that gets a little discolored, you see that little bit of discoloration in there? That's remnants from the dye, because believe it or not, I highly doubt this chicken was this beautiful, beautiful brown. Um, we're going to leave that in there, because we know that's going to get uh, buried by the, by the tie. And we'll go ahead and... Gather a small portion, pinch, and peel. And with any luck, our tips should be pretty close to being aligned. Well, we're going to go about a half a hook's length, half a, half a shank's length, I guess. Hook's gap. All right. Nice and easy. We don't want to go bananas back there wrapping that down. We want to keep our thread wraps, again, nice and methodical, nice and flat, nice and even. We'll just pinch all this down, working our way forward. And it's always good to see the hook bend, just the, not bend, but flex just a little bit as we tie along. And that lets us know we're getting a good amount of tension on there. Well, that's a little bit. We can go ahead and just trim that off nice and close. Hey, 
Hey, Steve, thanks for tuning in. Um, I just remembered about your question uh, about your email that I got about uh, Dave's, uh, what do you call it, the Mr. Brown. And I know I have some Mr. Brown material somewhere, some of the official Mr. Brown, but it's in a, it's in a tub, it's in a bin somewhere, safe. Put it in a safe place where I wouldn't lose it. And wherever that is, who knows. All right, one, two, tray. I'm using blue. Add them up, blue, flash of blue. All right, we're gonna tie this in full length from the front to the back. So what do you guys think? Uh, as far as audio and stuff, uh, background music, what, what should we do? What's your guys' thoughts and opinion? I think I need to find something different for the background music on, on these, uh, uh, these live streams. So Give me a give me a little uh, insight as I don't know something a little more upbeat, downbeat, chill. Now, mind you, I can't do actual actual music music. I have to pull everything off of the copyright free YouTube library. All right, we'll go ahead and wrap this forward, nice and even. So, something to think about. I can't, I, and I'm not into changing it all the time and often, but. I don't know. If I had a, if I had the right connection, if I knew the right artist, they could write me and compose me my own in a background mix. How cool would that be? And something, something chill to match the mood. All right, we're at our thread. Secure that off. We're just gonna keep wrapping on top of it in that last little bit. Hold it forward. Now we have it pointed in a proper solid direction. And every so often give it a little, little reminder of which which direction it should be facing. And the beautiful thing is, is with only three strands, you only have to keep track of three strands. It's not like you got 50 of them in here. So this was a suggestion from Steve to tie this pattern. And I'm tying it slightly different than um, I did four years ago or three years ago, 2000, whatever it was. All right, nice and even. And yes, you will have to fight it. This is one of those, it's not going to necessarily come easy flies. My eyes are already starting to strain. So after this fly, we'll have to take a little pause for the cause. I'll tell you that for free. Your thread wraps nice and even. We'll bump our red thread forward. And there we can continue on ba -ba -da -ba, with the blue. And again, hackle pliers, you know, really not the best to use in this situation. I found it best to just kind of keep a continuous pull and let the material slide through my fingers. So I'm just constantly letting it slide, keeping constant tension on this. Working our way forward. And with that, 
We did get a little bit of a slip there at the very end. But that'll work. Whew. All right, so let's see here. What do we got? Um, ever tie a Mr. Rapidan? Rapidan? Um, no, I have not. It's a brilliant little spent wing, split wing dry fly. We'll have to check that out. Let's not go too bananas with our thread wraps. Instead, let's add a little dab of insurance policy. And tonight we're using our uh, bone dry, our UV resin. Little dab. Just a dab more. Maybe just a touch more. Oh, that's nice. Always close your caps. Don't forget to close your caps. This public service announcement has been brought to you by Keep Your Caps on Your Bottles so you don't knock them over. Dot com. All right. I don't think it gets much, much better than that. A couple of seconds with the... Uh, Why did that not switch over? Has this been up there the whole time? When did this switch over? That's weird. Oh, I couldn't see it because there's a glare in the little monitor off to the side. Weird. Hope it wasn't too much of a distraction. Looking at nothing behind me. Probably seeing my shoulder and my... Somebody should have said something. I do pay attention to the chat 95% of the time. All right, let's add our peacock. Peacock hurl. One, two. This one looks like a good number three. These are smaller, smaller bits towards the bottom of the bag. That's all right with me. I don't need to... I don't need too much here. Line up the tips. And bada bing, bada bing. All right. Where did our little hack hook and hackle hook and hackle pliers? All right, slight twist to the right. Who remembers when they would say extend to the right? Do you extend to the right or extend to the left? I think typically, no, you extend to the left. And half right face. That's never good when they say half right because you know what comes after that right where's my where's my veterans at what comes after typically what comes if you're in the army I, I, I don't know about navy or marines or whatever but typically after half right face Yeah, buddy. Perfect. Nice and tight. I'll tell you to get in the front leaning rest position, which you're really not leaning on jack, and you're not getting much rest. I'll tell you that for free. All right. Enough shenanigans. Where did our hackle go? Same thing. Let's go ahead and just take a pinch off of the bottom. 
line those up. And I like to go just a tick past that red or just a little tickle of the tip of the hook. A couple of soft wraps just to get it where we want it. They're captured then we can rotate and position. All right, we'll go ahead and trim off those uh, butt ends. Nice and close. That's right, Josh knows what's up. The front leaning rest position. Boo. I'm gonna tell you to beat your face. No, you can't beat your face. Although, I will say, if I could go back and do basic training again, as far as, I don't know, maybe not the pain and the struggling, because I'm a sore old man now, but I don't know. The, uh, a boot camp for wimps would be nice, because, you know, you don't have all the physical stuff, but you still get to go out and do the obstacle course. You still got to train a little bit for the obstacle course and junk like that, but I don't know. It wasn't so bad. All right, let's go ahead and start off by cleaning this junk out. A little pinch, a little loosen that all up, make a mess. Get the shorties out. No short shorts. Don't want no short short hair. All right. Stack it in. So the pattern tonight, it is a Patriot Streamer variation. It's a streamer variation of the Patriot Dry Fly, which is on the Project Healing Waters uh, emblem on their coin. Hello. All right. We got a wing. This one's just a little denser than that last one. We just got a couple more strays. Still a couple more shorties to take out of there. That's about it. Line that up right about with the end. You can go a little bit longer. You can go a little bit shorter. I like to keep my lined up right about there. Right about there, that, that, that. Right, and we'll just go ahead and slight angle. Get some flat thread. There we go. Make sure it stays on top. get our thread up to the back we're gonna really reach up we're gonna do one wrap and as I go forward I'm pulling back forward so that thread wrap underneath is going up at an angle going up at an angle and around that way and it's pulling forward and it's helping that wing rooster up That'll do us. Had to take a closer look. All right, finish this off with a solid whip finish. I can tell this wing is just a little denser than that that last one. That's all right. Variety is the spicy spice of life, right? Beard is about 95% where it needs to be. We, if we got off about two degrees there on the bottom, but I think it'll still swim. All right, let's add our head cement up front. We got one kind of rogue jujube up there. 
And a little dab of head cement. And tonight we're adding some bone dry. A little dab of glue, yeah. Don't overdo it, folks. Don't glob it on. No big globs. No globs needed. It's thin stuff, so it should spread out nice and even. Nice and easy. Ooh, that's nice. The hook I'm using today, it is a one or a two X long streamer hook. The hook itself is a, it's made by Moonlit. I love barbless hooks. That's why I really like using these. And it's a one X strong streamer hook with a down eye. You could go with a straight eye and um, this is a 2x long size 4. Good question, good question. Other than that, it's a, a streamer hook of sorts. A little bit of hackle. Some thread, some flash. A little something for a little collar. But yeah, the wings on top. We got, mm, I don't know, let it be, right? Let it be, let it be. The letter B. Alright, let's flip this over and we're going to go ahead and just take a moment, see how everybody's doing. Where are we at? Now we're up to a dozen viewers. Thanks for tuning in, folks. We're right at about our halfway point. Uh, we're going to take a little pause for the cause here in a minute, but I just want to see if anybody has any questions, comments, or concerns uh, before we go any further. Turn up my volume like I can't, I can hear you or whatever, but. All right, thank you. Thanks for tuning in. Morin Brow. Run, bro. Yeah, we're doing good. It's it's a good time. We've been doing these Project Healing Waters live streams for. Um, let's see, we've tied Clousers, Poppers, Foam Hoppers, Muddlers, Creelix, Pass Lake, Dirty Hippie, Matuka. Oh, maybe next week we should keep it simple and do some mop flies. Okay, you've got this tied on a 3665A. Yeah. 365A. Actually, yeah. I believe that's what, a 7X? That's a 7x long shank, if I do believe. Is that what I tied it on previously? I really don't remember what I tied it on. <laughs> I'd have to go back and watch my old video, but no, nah, it's all good. All right, well, I guess on that note, I'm going to take a little pause for the cause. I'm going to grab a quick beverage. Uh, yeah, talking for an hour straight can leave me a little parched. Okay, there we go. Yep, so I did tie this. All right, so yeah, I'll be right back. I'm going to take a quick pause for the cause. Um, so please stand by.
Oh boy. All right, we're back. I got, apparently, I can't do the, uh, my camera with, <laughs> okay, so, uh, Steve was asking about the Mr. Brown, um, recipe, and what had happened was, uh, Dave, being the awesome gentleman he is, was able to send me, there we go, now we're back, okay, I think everything should be good now, remember guys, I'm no pro at this, alright, we got James, James is just tuned in, what's up buddy? There we go. Billy B.A., what's going on? Well, we are tying ourselves a Patriot Streamer variation. When I'm doing that, I'm hitting my volume button on my head headphones. Sometimes I just like to make sure I can hear myself, and other times I don't like hearing myself at all, but I'm still stuck wearing these headphones. So, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get this going. Uh, no, Patriot, Patriot Streamer. This is on a streamer hook with some bucktail. I guess you could call it a Patriot Wolf. Uh, but let's get this right here. And there we go. All right. <clears throat> Sorry for the technical hiccups there, but what can I say? We're doing this live. This is how we tie. Uncut, unedited. It is what it is. And we tie it live. All right, let's go ahead and set this one off to the side. Got a little Patriot Fly army starting to hatch up top. We got one, two, three, four, five, up. I'll have to six and a five and a half. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and uh, get our hook and our vise. Uh, we don't we don't keep things we don't go political here. We keep things very politically neutral. It's for catching bass. Because this is on a size 4. We'll catch ourselves a bass with this one. That's what I'm going for. Alright, let's go ahead and... Uh, let's see here. Get our hook in our vise. Size 4. It's a uh, Moonlit ML... Zero five four. And we are going to use a two ten denier red flat wax thread. Andreas is in the house. Good evening. And we're going to start our thread. Oh, a couple eyes lengths behind the eye. Hi, hi. Oh, yes. Um, Steve, I did get that recipe from uh, Dave, the Mr. Brown. I caught that right at the end of my break, which is why my camera uh, flip-flopped around. But I do have access to that now. So thank you, Dave. Uh, you are crisscross. Awesome sauce. Appreciate it, and I'll be sure to uh, forward that along uh, to Mr. Steve. All right, we'll continue our thread wraps. And that's how it all works, folks. Uh, we're all in this together. I say that time and time again. Just be mindful of that tip of that hook. 
right to the bend. All right, and our tail, we are gonna go with our brown hen hackle. And I'm looking for a feather with some longer fibers that I can harvest on or from the bottom. Let's go ahead and find the bottom. All right, you see that transition point where we go from the main, main barbules right down to there. So right off the get go. Where'd that junk go? It's out of here. All right, let's go ahead and even these up. Nice even tips. Pinch and strip that right off. Don't set that feather off too far. You're going to want the remainder of that. You're going to want that other half for the other for our throat. And we're going to go about a hook's gap for a length. You can tell these fibers are just a little bit shorter overall. So we're going to just wrap these in nice and tight. Keep our thread tips nice and flat. And I should just kind of taper off and ease into the hook shank. All the way up front. How many of these have I tied? I've tied two, so I have used uh, two, both sides of my uh, flash. Uh, yes, I am tying on the Regal. This is uh, the standard, standard jaw. All right, so we're gonna go for some blue flashaboo. And I'm going to go for one, two, tray. One, two, three. That's my number. You might have a different number in mind. But three is where it is for me. I'm going to tie this in up front. And we're going to work our way all the way back. Shorten up our little tag end. Nice, even thread wraps. Working our way to the rear. Every now and then, I'm just going to take a quick pause for the cause, spin my bobbin counterclockwise or anti-clockwise, whichever part of the world you're actually watching from. Nice, close, touching wraps. Even and tight. And you notice where I'm holding my flash, right? I'm just keeping it along the side. That's where I like to tie my stuff. I like to tie my stuff right on the side right about there and look how wide that thread got there we have it so nice even wraps working our thread forward we're gonna pause right there it's been messing with my eyes can't tell if it's there or not but we shall find out all right here we are we're gonna Break this up into thirds, so that was just a little bit too long. All right, let's grab our flashaboo, our blue flashaboo, and for the uh, for the typical Patriot dry fly, most of the recipes I've ever seen and how I've tied my uh, Patriot dry flies, I actually use a uh, pearl, clear pearl uh, flashaboo. Our, our grouping there. There we got it. Because you just got to put a finger on it and mash down just to make sure you don't lose that tension like that. Ah, this is getting me earlier. Now that last one just keeps wanting to slip.
There we go. Now we're cooking. Sometimes those first couple of wraps can be a little difficult. Just keeping everything lined up. And we're just going to keep our, uh, our flash of boost sliding through our fingers as we palmer, palmer this forward. All right, right to our thread. We're going to pause there. A little locking wraps. Excellent. All right, we're going to continue wrapping on top. Now we're pulling our flash of boost straight forward. Not, I'm not reefing on it. I'm not yanking on it. I'm just making sure it is staying on the side of the hook there. I think that's going to be it for our little red segment. And we're going to take our red thread, work our way back, forth once on our center bit. And yeah, that works. It's all about tension. And I'm keeping my thread, I guess my thread's out a little bit further than in most cases. That's I guess that's so I'm keeping it nice and flat and I can keep an eye on that and maintain that uh, that overall flatness or flat wax thread it's in the name all right pull that blue flashy boo back and we'll continue our thread wraps forward even Steven and we'll continue with our blue flashy boo And if you lose your tension, even for just a half an instance to even think about something, it's all gonna unwind. The blue is. I guess you could say you blew it. Last little bit, just needs to fill in just a little bit. Here we go. Nice tight locking wraps now. All right, a smolt crystal blue. That sounds like fun. That sounds like fun there. Let's go ahead and peacock curl. Wait, before we do our peacock curl, I want to add a little bit of sealant to my body. You could use uh, some secret sauce. You could add some Sally Hansen's on there, but right now we're uh, we're kind of pressed for time. We just don't have all day. If you were to use some uh, some fingernail polish or some other some sort of pet cement down there, you'd want to just make sure you give it plenty of time to dry. Tiny little bits, don't need much. A little dab, work it over that, nice thin coat. And we'll make sure we get our cap on our bone dry. And we'll just work our bodkin back and forth. Make sure it gets evenly distributed. I like that. Nice thin coat. Boy, that's shiny. All 
I always like to give it a few seconds. There's no, no sense of rushing that. All right. Where am I now? Now we're on to our peacock curl. Let's go with a couple of strands. One, two, three. These are not super long. These are kind of the, kind of the shorter runts of the pack. And that's all right with me. Nice and tight. All right, where's our plunger? Oh, dropped it. All right, let's go ahead and grab that by the end. And we're gonna give that a little twist clockwise. As I'm wrapping, I'm twisting. And there's that kind of that happy, happy medium. If you over twist it, it'll break. If you under twist it, then what are you even trying to twist it for? I'll still palm around. It gives it a little bit of strength too, I think. Because all those ha all those uh, peacock curls are just hugging on each other and hugging forward. It's just like a big, happy, twisty peacock curl hug. I don't know. It's been a day. What can I say? Happy hump day. Tomorrow is what? May Day. May. No. Is tomorrow May 1st or... Wait, one, two... Is tomorrow May 1st or the 31st? I don't know. My calendar is in Russian. I think it's May. Yeah, it looks like May. Pop quiz. What day is it tomorrow? Is it the 1st or 31st? No, tomorrow's the... Ah, I know why. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Today's the 29th, tomorrow's the 30th. See, when you have a calendar that starts on Mondays and you're used to calendars that start anyways. Yeah, whatever, guys. We're in quarantine. We're not quarantine, but we're at stay-at-home status day, I don't know, 30-something. At least here in the great state of Minnesota. All right, this is our same, about the same length as our tail. Right underneath, a little beard, a couple of wraps to get it on, and then we'll reposition, add some tension. Well, I mean, the thing is, is you can you can tie flies super fast, or you can tie flies to tie flies. I mean, I don't know. If you want, if you really want fish that bad, go to the supermarket, go to the grocery store, and you can always take shortcuts. But I don't know. I tie flies for a reason. That's because I like it. I get a lot of therapy out of it. I enjoy it. And I enjoy um, showing others, and I learn a lot by um, sharing and showing others. Uh, this video came as a uh, recommendation from uh, Steve earlier, and I thought, oh, wow, that sounds like a fun fly. And he goes, yeah, you tied it. So I had to go back and watch my own YouTube video, and how I'm tying it today is probably a little bit better than I tied it in that last time, that last video. It better eh, maybe maybe not I don't know if that's a good word but uh, it's definitely different 
because you know like the saying goes about uh, a man will never fish the same river because uh, uh, or never fishes the same river twice because it's never the same man and uh, never the same river right well same with fly tying I mean you can be a robot and uh, be exact and crank everything out exactly the same but I don't know I fancy myself fairly consistent but you know if I were to take each and every one of these uh, these streamers that I've tied here tonight and earlier today each one is fundamental well not fundamentally but just a probably just a little bit different um, in each one but then again you know I'm not gonna sit here and I haven't I'm not gonna tie a hundred thousand of these I'm I'm up to like seven or eight tonight and seven or eight is gonna keep me for quite some time all right here we are nice and stacked nice and even Steven yeah catch and release that's the way to go I love catch and release you don't have to worry about keeping track or, or size or, or anything like that Okay, we're going to trim this off at just a little slight, slight angle. One of the things you should consider is the base and the tip of your angle should not be wider than the area that, or shorter than the area that you left for your head up front. Nice and tight. Moving on there. We're back here. I lost a couple shorties in there, but that's all right. We'll get our wrap underneath. Hey, you. All right. That wrap underneath help uh, rooster up that wing and nice and tight. Finish this off with a whip. dab of a little dab of bone dry on here we're gonna call this good now just because you're fishing catch and release a hundred percent of the time you also at least in Minnesota, you do have to pay attention to seasons. You don't want to be fishing certain bits of water, um, you know, when you're not supposed to. Got to give those fish a break, man. They got to they gotta make mo babies. And I don't know. Has anybody tried to make a baby with uh, people walking all around you? Stomping in your bed? Kind of sucks, I suppose. So, let them chill for a little bit, I suppose. So there you have it. That is our Patriot Streamer variation. I like it. Definitely looks fishy to me. I'm going to have to go out to my secret lake, my top secret lake, and... Uh, Go throw this fly for a little while. I've been itching. Absolutely itching to go beat up my little secret lake. Let's hop over here for a second. Alright. Alright, we'll take another pause before we get into our last fly. This is coming out to be about 20 minutes fly 20 25 30 minutes thereabouts i'm jaw jacking in between and talking too so 
I don't know. It's it's not about how fast you can tie. Although, I forget what book I was looking at. Um, it actually kind of had uh, different ratings or uh, how much how much time should be spent on particular portions of a fly uh, throughout the the build process. Well, thank you, thank you. Nice fly, and uh, it looks great. Yeah. yeah, it's a fun fly. I, I, I think, I think we'll have to fish it soon. We'll probably have time for one more. We'll do one more and then we'll be done more. One more and done more for the evening. Um, I don't know, what do we do? Uh, we'll go, what's this? Uh, Dovion. Billy B.A. Dovion. Are you talking about Dovidas? Is he on? Steve Trybowski has spent up to eight hours for a display piece. Absolutely. You know, that's that's fantastic. And I bet you it looks like you put eight hours into it, too. Mm-hmm. All right, let's hop over and crank out one last one. And, yeah. We'll call it a night after that. It's been a beautiful day. It's been a beautiful week uh, weather-wise. We've had some crazy stuff come and go. Uh, but let's get our... All right, let's go ahead and get this bad boy going. Size four hook. Where do we put them? Oh, I gotta add this to the other side. We'll, we'll show. I'll show the camera. Show you guys where where we're hiding. Where my new <laughs> my temporary fly stash. Where I hang my flies. It's pretty cool. I think it's pretty nifty. Anyways, hook and vice. It all starts there, right? It all begins with a single wrap of thread. So next week, what are we tying? Let's do um, maybe some mop flies, huh? Let's do some mops. Did we have we done mops yet? I don't know. We'll start our uh, couple eyes lengths. Eye in the eye. Eye, eye. And we'll lay our thread base. Nice and flat, touching wraps. My brain is short-circuiting here, ladies and gentlemen. Ooh. You're, you're looking at your bench. Ooh, that, see? Now this... This is going to be great for like a, sp a spruce. Is that a spruce? Blue spruce? Brown spruce? The spruce goose? No. A dark spruce. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll find that for a dark spruce. Yeah, see those, those are great. Great for spruces, that color variation. Oh, that's so beautiful. I know I'm not the only one that gets excited when I look at feathers. You know who you are out there. You ever 
ever look at a feather or at a, at a bird and think, hmm, he's got some pretty feathers. Going for the longest of the longest. Got a little pinch. Strip that off. Just wrap forward, touching wraps. I didn't spend too much time back at the back end. I, I added my thread wrap and I moved on. I added the next one and I added the next one. Because all of that tied in that, uh, that hackle for the tail. Slow down there, AA Ron. Let's flatten that thread up. That'll work fantastically. Oh boy. I think that's a vote. I think that's a vote for mops for from Jess. I don't know. We'll see. We shall see. What else? What do, what do you guys suggest for uh, for a pattern? What do you want to tie next week? Mops are always good. See where am I at? I'm at my uh, my blue flashaboo stage. One, two, and if this was a little bit wider, I'd probably maybe just do two two uh, bits. But because this is a, a flashaboo, or not a flashaboo, but um, so thin, narrow, we gotta. Keep it at tray, but I wouldn't want to go much more than three. Three just more than three, you just start to fight it the whole time. All right, let's come up and under and around. Shorten that up a little bit. And I'll we'll take our touching wraps, working our way all the way back. I know this is a very boring fly to tie. But I think with uh, enough practice, now trust me guys, uh, your, your first one that you tie is not going to come out looking halfway decent. It might look better than mine out the get-go, but no. It, this is, it's a, it's a game of tension and practice and keeping your thread, thread management if you will. Take a sip of a sorry about that, a little tickle in my throat. Getting a little a little dry in here, jibber jabbering. So would you believe me? Would you believe me if I told you? Earlier today, I was doing a live stream, and I was doing it on Instagram, and my good friend tuned in, and my good friend has a infant at home, and it was probably about 15, 20 minutes after I concluded my live stream, I get a message, hey. Thanks for helping put the kid to sleep. Man, I don't know. I take that as a compliment. I'm helping putting putting kids to sleep during a, a global pandemic. I'll take that, I guess. Come on. Oh no, we hit the camera. We'll get that back into back into action. Come on guys, stick together. Alright, 
so I got this one who wants to fight you want to fight oh, I'm not going to fight you what I will do is I'll pull you forward knock your butt in like that haha -ha. see you later All right, now we can start wrapping forward. Take your time. Woo. Woofta goofta. You know you're from Minnesota if you cry out oofta. I never said oofta not once until I moved to the great state of Minnesota. There's a lot of things I never said until I moved to Minnesota. But here we are. Can't change it now. But I guess the same could be said when I lived in Georgia. I've been told after a couple of adult beverages, my my southern drawl starts to come out. But here we are, tying patriots, patriot drive fly or patriot drive flies, patriot streamers. Thread back and forth, taking our time. You see, I felt that. I, I could almost, I could almost feel the thread just kind of bump up on you. There we go. If you get a bump underneath, guess what? You're gonna have a bump on top. Well, I'll tell you what, let's plan on mop flies next week. Um, if you're not familiar with what a mop fly is, go ahead and, uh, I'm sure I, ha I think I have a mop fly video out there. I, at this point, I'm sure I have. Um, we've had a lot of fun with mops. Um, Jess has actually tied a, no, was it Jess or, I don't remember if she did it or if I did it, uh, but we are experimenting one day and we came up with the trop. It's basically a mop fly with three, not one, not two, but three mop bodies on it. What? The insanity. The insanity. Can it be contained? No. It shan't. I get some of my best ideas from my wife. She comes up with some amazing stuff. The Cyclops. Next to the Poppers. Oh, wow. Good stuff. Good, good stuff. All right. Let's not go to bananas. Let's add our uh, little dab of bone dry. If you find yourself having to add, having to add two little dabs, then you're probably doing good as far as keeping it sparse to begin with. You don't want to drag your bodkin on this uh, too tough because all that is is just flash glue that's just wrapped around. Um, there's no glue or anything on the inside sticking this all in. So you get a big toothy critter on this bad boy and You'll be glad you tied a few. Well, the Cyclops, my dear, is not a popper. It's a diver. Because the popper, the head goes like this, and it resists the water. When we do our Cyclops, we go like that, and it dives down. Bup, ba -da bup, 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 bup. The more you know. But yeah, I know what you meant. I'm just just saying. Yeah, I I love the Cyclops. I 
I think that's my absolute favorite. One of my absolute favorites. Oh yeah, and I'm supposed to give you uh, each of my flies. All right, where are we at? Let's do our peacock curl. Again, we're gonna go for one, two, three. Again, these don't have to be super long. As they do have to be nice and strong. One, two, and that's too short. That's too short. That's gonna work. Ooh, I see it now. A little bit of flashaboo is just kind of winking at me. It's like, cut me off, dude. All right. We're doing all right. We're doing all right. Ah, but what you don't know, you make up for it in your eagerness to learn and have fun with it that's that's the reality if you don't know it that doesn't matter but if you're willing to somewhat learn it i guess you don't even have to learn it you just can't mark around posing but if you're out there having fun that's what matters And when the fish are hitting, and you're out fishing everybody, they're not checking report cards. Yeah, the throp. The throp was awesome. It was pretty cool. The try, the try mop, the trop, the throp. <laughs> oh, that was awesome. Absolutely awesome. Have good times. You know, if you're not sharing this with your uh, with your family, then you're missing out. You know, I, I really enjoy sharing my passion uh, with my lovely wife. And I hope you're out there sharing it with your wives and girlfriends and boyfriends and children and grandchildren and parents. Especially if you know somebody who fly fishes and you're just getting into fly tying. Boy, I tell you what, you got your first couple years of Christmases and birthdays covered. Because that's all you're going to want to do. You're going to want to tie flies and give them to your family. Especially if they're fishing. If your family member's out there fishing with your flies and they catch a fish on it. Nothing. It's hard to beat that. It just. That's awesome. Alright. Bucktail. Bucktail. What do you say? Let's go ahead and clean that out. Yeah, let's plan on that. Next week, let's keep it simple. We'll have uh, some mops. Mops, mops, mops. All right, into the hair stacker. Tips down. And we'll stack that until those are nice and uneven. All right. Let's wing it. Up. This one's just a little bit, a little bit sparser than the last one we tied. Once that's nice and tight, we're going to lift this up. We're going to do one wrap. Pull forward. I'm not wrapping on top of that peacock curl. I'm going at a going at an angle. Right about 
see the bodkin underneath. Get about that same angle. Get about there. Then we pull forward on that. Tracking? Tracking. Alright. Quick finish. Let's go un, de trois. We have it. Let's add a little dab of resin on top. All right. Little dab, little dab. You can always add more. It's hard to take off. to take off your hoser. There you have it. Well, the Oh, you know what I completely, you know what I completely forgot to do on this one? Nobody stopped me. Nobody stopped me. I forgot to put the beard on. This guy doesn't have a beard. We forgot our beard underneath. Oh, well. Well, this one's not going to have a beard. And that's the reality. You know, not all of these are perfect. Because um, none of us are perfect. Dope. Oh, well. That was going too smooth. That was going way too smooth. Oh, well. Yeah, we're going to leave it. We're going to leave it at that. Still a sweet looking fly, I think. It'll still fish. I highly doubt the fish is gonna go, hey man, you're missing half of it. But it does add a good balance to having that, that wedge kinda. Oh well. This will be my first one I throw. That way it gets stuck into a tree or something. I don't know. Add this to the side. It needs more work. Believe it or not, I tied one and I forgot to do the resin. All right, let's see if we can't loosen that up and we'll see. There they are. Hanging off the ceiling. I got a big giant whatever uh, hook and a little foam foam ring it's supposed to go around to this go around your uh, stem of your vise but I've got it around a big old hook so that's where I hang my that's where I hang my flies to let them dry let them hang out until we get them into the box or bin so we'll pick this one this one looks a little, a little fuller that's not the last one we tied but that one's got all the bits and parts. So, anyways, let's go ahead and jump over here one last time. All right, so yeah, we're going to wrap it up. We're going to leave it at that. We're going to leave it at there and pop this over. Yeah, so next week we're going to hang out. We're going to tie some mops. We're going to have a good old time. Um, oh, I didn't even notice those lights kicked on. Those are set on a timer, believe it or not. But anyways, yeah. 
It was good hanging out with everybody once again. Uh, thanks for tuning in. This was the Patriot Patriot Streamer. On a size four. So, yeah, we're having a good time. Uh, be sure to join us next week. Same bat time, same bat channel. And, yeah. Doing good. Hope everybody's doing good, too. Um, you know... Whether you're into this whole pandemic thing or not, that doesn't matter. I just want everybody to be happy and healthy. Stay safe. Tight lines. Peace.